Sometimes in life, in order to move forwards, you have to move backwards. That may not make a lot of sense the way it came out, but trust me, when it comes to Connecticut football, that's exactly what they're doing, and it may pay off for future dividends. We're talking about Randy Etzel, you know, coached the Huskies throughout the 2000s, won a couple of Big East championships, including the most recent back in 2010, back when there was a Big East conference in FBS ball. And in 2010, um, they ended up going to the Fiesta Bowl, a major bowl, when, when they played my Sooners. But, yeah, that must have seemed like eons ago for the Huskies because over the last six years, um, it's a program that just – hasn't really had success. And as you can tell at the bottom of the screen, yeah, they haven't had a winning season since Edsel uh, left and took that head coaching job at Maryland. But now Edsel's back after the Bob Diaco experiment these last three years just didn't pan out. In fact, last year, Connecticut won three games, lost nine, including losing their last six. So Diaco fired now defensive coordinator at Nebraska. So you bring in Edsel, but you also bring in some other changes as well. And that's what you have to keep in mind with UConn football. It's not just the fact that you're bringing back Edsel, trying to revive this program that has struggled so much this decade, with the exception of 2010, of course. But you're also bringing in new coordinators. Bring in the offensive coordinator in Rhett Lashley. Name should sound familiar because he coached under Gus Malzahn at Auburn. And... Last week, by the way, to tell you how dedicated he is to trying to make UConn football better, he took a pay cut to come to Stores, Connecticut. That's dedication right there. Or rather, it's something else entirely. But uh, last week, we'll try to revive this Connecticut offense with a faster pace, more up-tempo. And I've said this before on other previews. If you're struggling big time, any change you make is positive. And it can only go up from here. We know this because last year, Connecticut – was flat out awful when it came to offense. In fact, they were the worst team in the country in points scored, not even 15 points per contest. And that included a couple of November games in 2016 in which they were shut out. And for the entire season, this team did not even score a first quarter touchdown. In fact, they only had nine points in the first quarter all season long. So you up to bat starts. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see why three and nine would show up on your uh, record. So any change you make is positive. You'll see a faster tempo offense, and you've got an experienced running back. In fact, he's been the leading rusher the last three years for the Huskies in uh, Arkell Newsom. In fact, a year ago, had over 700 yards receiving, and he's the leading returning receiver in terms of receptions. So Arkell Newsom, not very big, but definitely fast and plenty of uh, quickness to go with that. Might be an ideal offense for him. Well, compatibility is a big reason why uh, the incumbent quarterback, Bryant Sheriffs, uh, right now is not number one on the depth chart. Um, it's going to go right now to David Pendell, former JUCO QB out of the state of Pennsylvania, who ran an offense pretty similar to the one that uh, Coach Lashley is installing. Uh, Bryant Sheriffs, now the number two guy, a year ago, started the majority of games, seven TDs, but six interceptions. And again, he's the backup quarterback. Uh, receivers, and this is a big, big blow. When you lose a guy that was not only your best receiver, but he caught 100 passes for over 1,100 yards. We're talking about Noel Thomas. But he didn't have very many touchdowns, though. And again, UConn as a team did not have very many touchdowns. So from the TD touchdown perspective, um, you might actually be okay in this perspective. But every receiver is going to have to step up to make up for the overall production loss of Thomas. We'll begin uh, with Hergy Maella, the former Canada product out of Quebec. Started eight games last year, uh, played in 10 and is the leading receiver in terms of yardage with almost 300 at 296. Tyler Davis, um, you have him back, Tyler Davis, and uh, Quavon Skeins. Davis played all 12 games last year. Skeins, a red shirt freshman. And you have Tyreek Beals, who will figure into the mix as well. Started in two games last year, but played in every single one of them. So there's experience there, but again, the loss of Noel Thomas Hurts. The tight end, Alec Bloom, returns. And he has started a total of uh, 23 games in his career, started every game last year, and had 15 catches, including a touchdown. Offensive line, oh, my gosh. Uh, you do have experience back, but these guys last year did not get very much push. They weren't very physical, and it showed as far as two big categories, rushing yards per game. They only averaged 115 yards on the ground per contest and they gave up 37 sacks. So unless these guys have shown progress, unless they can play 
better together as a unit. I don't know how much the experience returning is going to help, but they do have four of the five guys who've seen some starting time, including the left tackle, that's uh, Matt Pert, um, a junior. At the right tackle spot, uh, Tommy Hopkins, not as many starts, only three last year, played in five games. Uh, but a guy that started every game last year, Ryan uh, Crozier is back. He's a senior. You have him at the center spot. And at left guard, Trey Rutherford um, started in seven of the 12 games. But one big unknown is going to be at uh, right guard, the redshirt freshman in the form of uh, Cam D. Gear, who is a Massachusetts product. So a lot of experience, but these guys have got to get a better push. They've got to give their running game somewhat of a shot. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing as we saw last year, regardless of the change, and that is an inconsistent offense. Now, defensively, um, kind of splitting hairs on this area because on one hand, um, UConn did do a good job in terms of rush defense. I mean, they didn't give up a lot of yards per game on the ground, about 140, and that's that's respectable. In fact, it was one of the best um, numbers in the American Athletic Conference. Um, and even better news, you return all three of the guys up front. Now, they are making a couple of changes. Number one, defensive coordinator. That's uh, Billy Crocker. They're bringing him in from Villanova. And Villanova, he was successful. They only gave up 15 points per game. But now you're going from FCS football to FBS football. And it's also going to be a change in alignment. They're not running a uh, four defensive front alignment. It's not going to be the 3-3-5. Three, three, so that's going to be uh, a change that UConn has to get used to in a hurry. But, again, you have all three back up front. Cole Ormsby, um, who had four sacks last year, he's back. All three of the guys up front, by the way, are seniors. Nose guard in a Folo Fatakazi started every game a year ago, as did Luke uh, Carrizola, a defensive end. Both seniors. Like I said, they both started every game, and both, by the way, at 43 tackles apiece. I like the linebackers a lot for Connecticut, one of the best units in the AAC. Vontae Diggs, though, kind of fighting an injury right now. He may not play in the opener against Holy Cross, but should play in the second game of the year, which is very important because it's against the AAC conference favorites, uh, South Florida Diggs, who at one point in his life was living in his car. So he knows what it's like to overcome adversity. A year ago, had 84 tackles, um, leading returning tackler for UConn. Junior Josephs would compliment him just fine. Uh, another linebacking spot, redshirt senior, who had 81 stops in 2016. And uh, Chris Britton will fill out the other linebacking spot, a redshirt junior. Secondary last year had major struggles. They didn't get very many turnovers, but they were very, very vulnerable against the pass. As a matter of fact, they gave up close to 265 yards of passing per game which ranked outside of the top 100. So they're going to have to force turnovers. UConn a year ago um, was a dismal minus eight in turnover margin. But you do have experience at the corner spot. Jamar Summers, he's back, had a couple of picks a year ago. Trey Bell, um, who started his career at Vanderbilt, um, will end it with UConn. He's a senior. And they're going to break in a freshman in Tyler Coyle as another defensive back. He'll play some corner. And the two safeties, we'll see how they pan out with Marsh Terry, a sophomore. And you got uh, Bryce McAllister uh, fulfilling um, another safety spot. And I also expect, too, to see Anthony Watkins, a junior, uh, play some safety as well. So Connecticut, I do like their run defense. But, again, you're going to a 3-3-5, and they've got to get more pressure on the quarterback. They only had 17 sacks a year ago. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, they're going to be breaking in a new punter as well as a new place kicker. The schedule for UConn, well, they'll begin pretty early. August the 31st shouldn't be a problem against Holy Cross and FCS school. But then you go from Holy Cross to Holy Macro because the next week uh, is the conference opener. And it's against the AAC favorites, a team that's already got one win under their belt in 2017. And they're ranked in the top 20. The South Florida Bulls coached by Charlie Strong. I think South Florida, amongst the group of five conference champions, I think they'll be the team that gets a um, New Year's Six Bowl invite. I think South Florida's that good. Virginia and SMU are the next two opponents, both away from home. Um, tough matchups for them, but I would not say out of the realm of possibility for a win. They might get a split in that one. But early October, hosting Memphis, who's expected to win the West Division of the AAC. Not expecting much there. And then the next week, you play the defending conference champions, Temple. You get them on the road. And the second half of the schedule... 
you got a three-game home stretch, a chance to get maybe two wins out of that, Tulsa as well as Missouri, and then East Carolina. East Carolina, I think, is going to be their best shot at a win amongst those three games. But then the last three games, you play away from Storrs, Connecticut. And look at that matchup against Boston College. I say it's at Boston. It's at Fenway Park. It's right home of the Red Sox. I've never been a big fan of football games at traditional baseball stadiums. It just looks positively goofy to me. And then you close out the year against Cincy, a team that UConn did beat last season. Vegas says that Connecticut will have 3.5 wins. I'm going to say four wins. I do like the fact that they brought back Randy Etzel and that they have new coordinators. But this is going to take a lot of time. I know UConn fans don't want to hear that, but the... AAC is the toughest of the five group of five conferences. So their progression is going to be slow. It's going to be, have to be done in moderation. It's not going to be an instant turnaround. But I do think UConn is taking the right steps.